All right, this is a pretty common kind of question where you dissolve a certain mass of solid into water and then see how the temperature changes. Now, I'm under the impression that when you dissolve a solid in water, generally the temperature goes down a little bit, but it just so happened that the salt I picked when I looked it up it makes the temperature go up a lot. It's actually the salt that you use in hot packs. When you break it open and the two mix, the temperature goes up a whole bunch. In any case, the question is, if the temperature goes up 17.5 degrees Celsius, what's the heat of solution? Now what that asks is, how much heat is freed when this becomes aqueous or dissolves inside the water? Now, heat of solution, or delta H, is also called the heat of dissolution. It's also called the heat of dissolving. And maybe your teacher used some other word for it. But I want to show you how to calculate it. Long story short, you need to know how much heat was liberated when it dissolved. You can do that using M delta TC, mass, change in temperature, heat capacity. And delta H is simply the amount of heat that was released but usually per mole of the solution. So we're gonna to need to convert that to moles at some point. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's find out how much heat was released. Well, it turns out that I have 50 grams of the water. I have a temperature change of going up 17.5 degrees Celsius. And my heat capacity of water, which I just know, and you probably should too by now, is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Notice the grams cancel out, the degrees Celsius cancel out, and when I do this on my calculator, I end up with 50 times 17.5 times 4.184. I get 3661 joules. Sweet. That's how much heat was released to heat up the water. Now, you're, you might be wondering why I used 50 grams because it's the water that's being heated here. It's the same reason that I say the temperature of the water went up 17.5 degrees Celsius and the heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. But here's the deal. Delta H, or the heat of dissolution, is usually per mole. So I need to know how many moles of the solid I dissolved. Remember how to, con remember how to find the number of moles for mass? You find the mass that you have, in this case five grams, and divide it by the molar mass of the substance. That's the atomic mass of calcium plus two times the atomic mass of chlorine. You end up with, uh, I think it's 110 point something. I should have recorded that. Let's just assume it's 110. Uh, and it's grams per mole. So five grams is worth 0 0.045 moles. All right, this is where we enter the final stage because to calculate delta H, all we need is the amount of heat that was released, 3,661 joules, and it only took 0.45 moles of solid to do that. So let's try this. Let's try 3661 divided by 0 0.045. I get 81,356 joules per mole. Cool. That's how much heat was released during this process. One thing I want to point out, heat was released when this happened, which makes it an exothermic reaction. So I'm going to put a negative there because negative delta H's are exothermic reactions. Now, I'm going to just convert this to negative 81.4 kilojoules per mole, makes the numbers a little smaller, and kilojoules per mole is still a pretty common unit. And what I want to point out to you is that, here's the website I stole that number off of, Calcium chloride anhydrous, negative 81.3 kilojoules per mole. Yay, we were pretty close. So, the answer to your question, how do I figure out 
the delta H of solution when I'm dissolving a solid in water is, use Q equals M delta TC to get the heat, divide that by the number of moles of stuff you have, and for good measure, put it in kilojoules per mole, and make sure it's negative if the water got warmer and positive if the water got colder. That controls for whether it's endothermic or exothermic. Boom, best of luck.